Well, hey, and welcome back. Unfortunately, this week, the project that I was doing was taking a bit longer than I expected. But thankfully, due to advances in technology, I can now complete the project from the comfort of my own sofa. So apparently, every other game possible must have been made, because apparently someone has finally decided to make a milling machine simulator game. Probably weren't expecting that, were ya? And at only $20, it's many, many dollars less than buying your own milling machine. And it's glowing reviews like these ones that has made UI Games the undisputed champion in the heavily competitive workshop simulator genre. So let's boot up the old Windows box and let's see what's what. Well that was definitely an entrance if I say so myself. I'm not exactly one to judge a book by its cover, unless the cover is particularly bad, but that was a pretty good entrance. Although with that said, I am a little bit sceptical. That workshop floor is a little bit too clean to be realistic. So based on a lot of the reviews, the biggest complaint that a lot of people have is the controls in the UI. It seems to be a bit more complicated than it has to be. And I can kind of see what people mean. At least at first it is a bit much, but you do sort of get used to it. And that in the industry is what we would call realistic. Well the first thing I would do is switch in a shell mill. I don't normally get to use these all that often, so it would be nice to have a play around with one. And that is a pretty respectable cut if I say so myself. I feel like I'm getting the hang of this. Oh wait a second, I have this turned off. And that would be exhibit A on why I'm not allowed to use shell mills. So let's switch back to a roughing end mill, something I'm a little bit more familiar with. So this looks like this is the uh, auto feed settings. Pretty good cut, but the controls are kind of clunky, but it seems to work. Uh, oops. Let's quickly move on to drilling. Well that definitely seems to work. The big thing here is just there is no real feel to the cutting, so I'm just sort of guessing to how well it's cutting, and judging by the state of that hole and the fact that the twist drill is in one piece, it looks like I did a good job. Let's quickly finish it off by going for a countersink. Well, I got no disagreements there. That looks exactly how it would look on my milling machine. That is pretty realistic. Ah, uh, looks like I'm lacking a bit of rigidity there. In fact, I'm just wondering if I can skip the drill and just drill down with the countersink. I wouldn't do it with my machinery, but I'd happily do it with someone else's. And I tell you what, that definitely does work. Well, let me try this again with a chamfering tool. Yeah, and once again, the controls definitely do need some improvement. It's very clunky and it's very easy to make mistakes.
And once again, I guess it works as well as you would expect it to. And whilst I'm here, let me try and drill into the vice. Because obviously no one would accidentally do that on their own vice, would they? And that is completely unharmed. I bet you not even a Kurt Vice could do that. Okay, so that's enough mucking about. Let's see if I can actually make something. And by actually making something, I mean, let's do it on the computer. So that's not really making anything, but you get what I mean. And let's make it simple. Let's make the simplest thing I could make, and that is going to be a tea nut. We'll make the material cast iron, and we'll make the stock a little bit oversized so I can machine it back down to size. And for once, it looks like I can skip using the hacksaw. We'll start off with a carbide end mill and just machine down each side. I might as well use carbide if I'm not actually going to have to pay for each end mill. I mean, I can use high speed steel if I really wanted to, but why would I when I have carbide? And I have to say, it is rather enjoyable machining cast iron on the computer. Well, mostly because it doesn't involve having to clean up any of the cast iron dust. In fact, that's probably the only reason why it's so enjoyable. If they made a cleaning up cast iron simulator, well, I'd buy it. With the sides now beautifully machined, we can now drill the centre hole. First of all, let me just eyeball the drill so I can find the centre and the edge. So I guess in a sense it is pretty realistic. In fact, maybe a bit too realistic if you ask me. Okay, pretty easy. So let me just quickly countersink it. Okay, with that done, let me quickly flip it and then take it to its final size. And once again, I'll attempt to use a shell mill. Okay, at this point, I think I'm getting the message that I'm not to be trusted with shell mills. Might be easier if I just use an end mill. Okay, and that's the tea nut. Probably turned out as well as you'd expect. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my experience of Milling Machine 3D. It actually was a lot more realistic and fleshed out than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a lot more basic than it really was, but I got a whole lot more, including surface speed calculations and, you know, the bits breaking. But with that said, there's definitely a lot more room for improvement. The controls are definitely the area that could see the biggest improvement. They really are clunky and they're just not that intuitive to use, and as a result it does hamper the playing experience. I know there are hotkeys for a lot of the movements, but it is really clunky and it just doesn't seem to work all that well. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, I am more of a lathe guy than a mill guy, so it would be nice to see a lathe at some point in the game, and maybe some rotary table or dividing head additions for the milling machine. Overall, I've sunk a few hours into the game and I have had a lot of fun playing it, but I wouldn't pay full price for it. I think I bought this for about $20 and I wouldn't pay anything more than that, at least in the state that it currently is in. It's definitely not a game for everyone, but if you don't have a milling machine and you do want one, this game might be right up your alley. And that's about it for now. A bit different from normal, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.